I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I'm trying something new. Back when Hoekstra Hardware here in Kalamazoo was closing and they had their going out of business sale, I went there and bought this uh, EasyPower.com Isomax Industrial Quality 5 8 and half inch motor arbor. Now, I got it because it was available and I thought it would be worthwhile to have on hand. Now I have an actual use for it. I talked before about this 3M abrasive wheel and how well it worked on removing rust. Well, I tried to find these at Walmart where I got this one from. It took a little searching to find out where I actually bought it. And Walmart doesn't have them anymore. Either they didn't make a good enough deal on the thing so that they got them at a low enough price or they just decided they didn't want to handle the stock. Who knows? Walmart's run by people who have no clue about what I want. Otherwise, the store here on Gull Road would be in much better shape than what it is. It's really not a great Walmart. Not that all Walmarts are, but this one really isn't. So I went to my local hardware store here in Richland and found a Performax 4-inch paint and rust remover. Now, it doesn't say 3M on it, but it's the same thing. Except, it came with the uh, wheels dismounted. They're not on anything. They're on a little, they have a little arbor here in the package that allows you to mount them, but they're not mounted. So what I did is I thought, well, I can mount this in my drill motor and, and use this that way. I thought perhaps I can mount these on an arbor like I did this, which actually worked pretty well. But this has to be mounted in the lathe and it's a little awkward. So it's kind of a pain in the butt to use. Or is it? Now we're back to the arbor that I bought at Hoekstra's. Now, it mounts on a half inch or 5 8 shank motor shaft. And this little quarter inch, this little quarter horsepower motor has a 5 8 shank on it. Now the little arbor is actually kind of cool because it came with an Allen wrench so that I could install it, which always impresses me when they send the proper tools along with the thing. And it has a little sleeve so it can go on a smaller shank motor arbor. And it just slips over. Look at that. How's that for cool? Tighten the two set screws. with the handy dandy supplied Allen wrench. Now it's going to chew up my key. But I don't think it'll bother anything. Because I don't use a key on this shaft anyways. This motor came to me on a small grinder and it provided with a switch, so it's actually quite easy. Here's where the really cool thing comes in. The shaft on this arbor is a half inch 20 shaft. I slip this into the chuck. Now, I'm probably going to have to come up with a way to hold this because this will work, but it's not exactly my favorite way of doing things. Now I have a chuck mounted on the spindle. I can grip this arbor.
and also this one. So I now have a way to hold this arbor that holds my scotch bright pads and I have a way to hold this arbor that holds a scotch bright pad and even these. I think I want to mount this onto a board so that I can clamp it in my bench vise because I do like that option of having a, a quick an easy way of locking things to the bench instead of having to use C-clamps all the time. But that'll be something for later in the day, because right now I just want to try this. So I'm going to go with a quick expedient of C-clamps holding it to the bench. There, pretty solidly anchored. Now, I'm going to double check and make sure that I have everything tightened before I apply power. Because it is awfully easy to have a mistake made. Make sure I got my set screws locked down tightly. I have the chuck secure. I'm going to plug this apparatus in, but I'm going to do it with an extension cord. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, a couple reasons. One, I don't want to get jammed up. And two, it gets me out of range. We're gonna let things run a little bit. Then we're gonna check and make sure everything's still tight. Unplug the power. This is an old motor. And it has bearings that you put oil into. And that type of motor, you want to oil it every time you use it. Made by the Dayton Electric Manufacturing Company, Chicago, Illinois. And it's a model KS60MM1139 type KS. Quarter horsepower, 1725 RPMs. Now I might find that it's better to put a, a speed reducer on it, in which case I have a resistor that I'll put in line and we'll see what that does. But right now, I'm just going to try it and see what happens. Check my set screws again. Still tight. Still tight. Everything appears to be good.
But everything stayed tight. I think I'm going to try it with a smaller arbor in it. This one is running rather out of balance just because I have such a huge rotating mass on it. Now that I have all my PPE off, I'm going to give you a couple of pointers on what I learned running this arbor. Always want to work off the bottom of the wheel. When you're running the wheel, you want to make sure and have the wheel actually sitting on top of the major portion of the plate. In other words, you don't want to run the wheel out near the edge here because your hand will allow it to slip up and then once it gets onto this part of the wheel it's going to try and climb up and it's going to try and tear it out of your hands. Not a good thing. Whenever you're working on an edge with the wheel rotating this way and me working off the bottom I want to have the edge of the steel plate on this side so that the wheel is going to go in this direction and try and push down on the blade. If I came up here, it's going to grab a hold of that blade and yank it out of my hands. So I want to stay down here on the bottom of the wheel and go in that direction. Obviously, if your motor is running this direction, you want to go the opposite way. Never work with the edge of the wheel going like that. It'll catch, yank it around, and take it right out of your hands. Now, I haven't had that problem. If you get yourself in that kind of a situation, it's going to be an official bad day. Now, do I really like this setup? It works. It's functional. I'm not real happy with it. I think I need to be able to stand like this with a wheel so that I can control it better.
That way I've got two hands on the operation. It's going to yank it away from me if I, if I make a mistake. It's going to pull it out of my hands. So I think it's going to do a much better job going that direction. For large objects, I still think the drill motor is better. This works, but I think the drill motor is a better operation. It's much less likely to get out of your hands, and you're not having to try and haul this big piece of steel around. Little blades, I think this will work fine. Does a quick job, it's still doing a quick job, and wear a face shield. Little bits and pieces come off of this thing all the time. This time I wore my respirator. Keeps the dust away from me. This was a small plate, didn't have anywhere near the rust on it that the big uh, two-man saw did, and it did a fine job of cleaning it up. Now I'm going to take this one down the rest of the way with some sandpaper and mineral spirits.